Alright, what's good guys? Today we're going to be looking at the 1KZ motor itself. We're going to be taking the injector pump off. Now this is an ECU driven injector pump and we're hopefully going to be refitting it with this injector pump off a 3L 2.8 high ace motor. Um, the reason for that is, is that this injector pump is a complete mechanical injector pump. All it needs to run is a 12 volt signal to the fuel shut off valve and once the motor's turning over this thing will crank diesel straight into it and run with no other electrical aids whatsoever. The injector pump on this is a bit smarter however, it's got several plugs all over it and it is ECU driven so without an ECU and a wiring loom running to that injector pump there's no way we can get this 1KZ going. Um, I, don't want an, uh, I don't want to make this injector pump run because I don't want an ECU in this truck. We're going to be submarining this truck deep underwater, electrics, ECUs, cut that out. This injector pump will be full mechanical, it will be able to go completely submerged and as long as it's got a 12 volt signal to that fuel solenoid this thing will keep on chugging. As long as I've got clean air going to it through the aid of a snorkel, it will be sweet as. It should be a direct bolt on process, but I'm not too sure on that because I've never done it before. So by no means this is a tutorial on how to remove or install this. It's me learning and if you can pick up a few pointers along the way and possibly do it yourself, then bang on. But um, we're going to start with taking off the timing cover and then undo the bolts that mount it and also pull the injector pump lines off, or the injector lines off the back of the injector pump. Um, and we'll see to we're from there, so let's get into it. Okay, now we've got the timing belt cover exposed. As you can see there, for just for people's reference that might not be aware, the injector pump on a diesel is completely in time with the engine. So this cam gear here is in time with the injector pump, so when this cylinder is coming up or sucking or squeezing, suck, squeeze, bang, blow, whatever cycle it's in, the injector pump will be in the same cycle as well, ready to feed pressure to this injector line here. The injectors are basically just a little squirter, basically your Gardena garden hose, but they've got a um, crack pressure inside them as well. So there's actually a spring diaphragm type setup, and when the compression of the diesel is at so much pressure inside here, let's say for instance 130 psi, that will override the crack pressure, and that is what opens up the injector to pssst, missed it in. So the injector pump, it is vital, it is in time with the engine. So here's our four injector lines at the back of the pump. So we'll just go through all of those and crack those off and get them out of the way. Alright, so now those are loosened off, we'll just pull them back, they'll sit there all happy like. Um, what else have we got to undo off of this thing? We've got a fuel line, probably a return coming back here, probably a return valve maybe. Pop that off. Okay, with a 24mm I've just turned the crank, which has turned the cam, which has resulted in the injector pump timing turning as well. Now I've rotated it until you can see there's a little line in there, and it matches up with a white line that was already pre drawn on there by someone in the past. So I've lined that up with that, so now when I put that pump on, I'll just go line it up the exact same way. On this one here, you can see there's a line there, so that line there I'll be aiming for to line up with that, and hopefully it works out the same. Looking at them though already, um, that gear, that pulley, looks far bigger than that one, so maybe we might have to put this drive pulley, drive gear, on um, that pump and we'll see how that goes. Hopefully they've got the same spline and the same size keyway and they're just a direct swap. And we'll actually probably just use this pulley on that pump. So we'll see how that goes now. Now I'll take out a couple of bolts here, remove this power steering reservoir. Um, also take off the tensioner here and get this belt out of the way. And then we've just got a couple of bolts around the outside and another two bolts there holding the pump on and it should just slide straight out, very easy. Alright, the next two nuts that I can see, one down there and one down that side as well. These two nuts here have actually got a little bit of a hole in there, so you can actually turn the injector pump side to side. 
um, that would be for advancing and retarding the injector pump timing basically the same as or similar to on a petrol motor um, turning the distributor left to right to advance and retard the um, ignition timing on a petrol so it'd be very much the same thing on this so all it's doing is bringing the um, squirt of the diesel or the injection of the diesel or your crack pressure setting off it's just bringing it forward and back from advancing and retarding it from when you're getting near your top dead center i'd imagine anyway okay just got the uh, two nuts there for the advancing and retarding off of it now it should i don't mind check the pump lines where we're going to get in the way here and make a bit of economy should just slide out the back now all right we're definitely loose definitely free hmm this is probably where I would advise taking the injector lines off completely to um, aid in not doing any damage to them but I'm not about that so I'm probably just going to bend them out of the way slightly and um, be a bit of a rough cunt so might just go off here to do this eh? All right, and there is our injector pump. So as you can see here, plug here, plug here, another two plugs on top, three plugs on top. Um, yeah, and also the main thing is there's no throttle linkage on this injector pump. So this motor is basically fly-by-wire. As you know, it's diesel, so there's no throttle body on it. There is a soft start, which is a throttle body and as such, but um, there's no throttle body to control the throttle. So, and because there's no new throttle linkage on this injector pump, useless now this full mechanical injector pump we've got throttle linkage right there so the accelerator cable goes straight to this wham, 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 wham. all right i've just noticed that the mounts on the back of these pumps that mount it to the block they are slightly different um being that this uh, injector pump is off a complete different engine block so we'll just whip the bolt out of here whip the bolt out of here swap the mounts over and hopefully she should be savvy dog All right, let's try slide this uh, 3L pump in there, see how she fits. A bit of luck, very easily. All right, that's sitting almost home right there. That mount lines up perfect. I can do the bolts up for the advance and retard and this thing's pretty much home. Very easy. All right, the two bolts that hold it on for the advance and retard though, I did have the same issue with getting it off. The one down the side there is an, an impossible situation to try get back on. Um, I did get it off with a universal and my extension, but I'm um, trying to get the nut back on there. I can't get it down there with my fingers, so I'm gonna have to try and, so keep in mind, there is one that's a cunt. Hot tip though, a little bit of insulation tape around the old universal can still flex and give you the universal jointness that it offers but now it's just a little bit more stable and not quite as floppy dick so Alright, got all four injector lines on there, as you can see they were all pretty much status quo from the last injector pump so didn't have to bend them, tweak them or anything, they just straight on in the exact same order, no dramas, no real difference. Alright, we're back around the front of the motor now, so here's our spline coming out of the injector pump, keyways all in perfectly, and here is the pulley that came off the 1KZ pump, so now hopefully this just goes straight back on, nice and simple, there is a, um, what do you call it, a little doohickey 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 spaghetti thing telling me where this should be put so it lines up with the marks again and our mark lines up perfectly with um, where it was when we took it off so we know that that hasn't changed so that should be good fire four bolts in it and uh, we'll be on to the timing belt All right, now we've got the thing all mounted up, all the bolts are tight, this thing is home, it's exactly where it wants to be. It's time to move on to putting the timing belt back on. Um, we've got our hydraulic tensioner here, so what I need to do now 
is get a vise or a G-clamp and basically tighten this up until it just pushes that little spline back and then get a pin and stick it through that hole and it'll go through that hole there and hold it in. You then bolt it all in place. Once the belt's on, pull the pin out and that'll poke out and put tension on our belt that we need to get on there. All right, all I've used is a G-clamp, bit of 4x2 there just to hold it a bit flatter. Slowly done it up because it is, I believe, hydraulically filled. Um, so you just do it up little by little by little while it slowly pushes the fluid back into its other reservoir. Um, you'll find that if you try and go real fast on it, it'll get real tight and you won't be able to do fuck all. It won't move that fast, but you just nice and slow, take about five minutes and just slowly wind it in, push it all the way in. I've then got this bit of um, wire here or easy flow if you're in the know, um, poked it through the holes and basically when I take this clamp off, um, that pin won't be able to push out, it'll hold it back with this so that'll give you time to then install it and then pull the bit of wire out and then it'll push tension on that belt let's get into it all right then we'll slide this uh tensioner in place whack a couple of bolts in it and we'll be able to pull the pin out and then we'll turn it over a couple of times and make sure the timing marks all line up afterwards Right, now when we pull this uh, bit of wire out, you should see that tensioner whoosh, push out and push hard against this pulley um, and it will take that slack out. So I'll just give that a little bit of time to rest and it should, well it's already pulled that slack out already, but it should slowly just put all its pressure it can on it over a little bit of time. Now what I'll do is I'll put a socket on me crescent, turn this over, now I'm looking for the marks to line up. So we've got a point there on the motor, you can see a point. That point should line up with the line on me um, gear. Where's the line or oh, the marks in behind there on there? And for the top, where's a line here? So there should be a line, okay, right there. You see a line on that pulley? Um, and that lines up with a line just behind there in the dark that you might not be able to see. But I'll go ahead and turn that over a couple of times. Make sure it's still in time so we don't bugger anything while we're doing it. And then um, we should be able to put an, a uh, bell housing on there and start a motor and possibly start this thing on the floor. All right, I've rotated it by the crank. It's turned the cam, turned in the injector pump in return, and my lines are right on the perfect there and right on the money on that line there as well. So now what I'm gonna do is, like I said, bell housing, start a motor, and then we might uh, run a fuel hose to it and I'll get uh, battery and some jump leads and try and crank it over. What I need to do though, is I need to find out which wire is gonna be the fuel on off solenoid. There's only three wires on this injector pump. Um, one of them's probably tack signals for the TACO, so you got your rev counter, but I'm probably not gonna worry about that. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just probe a 12 volt around here until I hear a click, 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 and that'll tell me I can hear the solenoid clicking open and shut, and I'll run 12 volts to that. Okay, fuel solenoid was very easy to find, so on the injector pump, it's basically just the back one right before the fuel lines. Makes sense, don't it? Followed the green wire to the plug, there's three wires in there, ran my earth from my car battery charger, just got it wrapped around one of the injector pump lines to ground everything. Oh shit, short circuit, well done. Um, prodded the, prodded the uh, probe, the plug on, um, or the terminal should I say, on the green wire, and if you listen carefully, you can hear the clicking of said fuel solenoid. So if I just poke that in under there, that should tell me that that's open. Now I just need to run fuel to it and um, a battery to the starter motor and get it to crank over and it might try and fire. I'm not sure, not really sure, but uh, we'll give it a go. First things first I gotta do is I gotta find some engine oil cause there's nothing in this motor. So needs oil in it and uh, I need a good battery, some jumper cables and uh, we'll see what's up. All right, I've got a makeshift um, fuel can here. So it's just an oil can with a fitting in the bottom going to this hose. So I've got that, got some diesel in there, ready to go. I've got the starter motor on there. I've got a battery there with some jumper cables to try and make the starter motor crank over. And the battery charge is there to hook up to the injector pump to open the fuel solenoid. So um, I'll hook all this up now and come back on cam after that. And hopefully this thing will crank over. Now, when I bought this motor, this guy did say that the starter motor was a bit iffy. It was starting to get a bit slow to crank over, but let's just hope it cranks over, eh? All right, let's, um, now I should just have to trip the positive out to the starter motor solenoid and... 
Hmm. So the starter motor solenoid is definitely thrown out. You can hear it clicking, like you can hear, you can obviously hear it clicking. Uh, but it doesn't seem to engage the motor to start cranking it over. So I might just grab a hammer and um, give it a little love tap and see if that gives us any different noises. Actually, turns out I've got a hammer right here. Anything's a hammer, unless it's a screwdriver, then it's a chisel. Hmm. All right. Well, other than using the correct technique, which we just were, <laughs> um, maybe I need to whip the starter motor off and give the starter motor a bit of a floor test and see if I can get it to actually turn over. Because it's throwing the ring gear, it's throwing the um, cog out onto the ring gear, but it's not um, turning over. All right. I got it on the floor. Now, what we should see is the cog kick out, and once the cog kicks out, that creates. Uh, well, switches the current on into the electric motor, so it should kick out and then start spinning. So let's. Hmm, very slow. Alright, I'll go try this on another battery and see if I get the same result. If I get the same result, then we need to rebuild the starter motor too. All right, well that's a real bugger. Um, just tried that starter motor on the battery out of Cliffy, so same result, still turning over real slowly. So I'm imagining those brushes are completely buggered inside there. Um, could even be just um, dirty copper plates inside the solenoid as well. Bit of grease in there, as you can see, it's quite oily around there. So not a lot of current getting through into that electric motor. So in the next video, we'll pull the backy off this, pull the solenoid apart, give it a clean up. Hopefully the brushes are still good in there. and. Um, We'll make the starter motor work and then hopefully we can start this thing on the ground because I should be able to get this thing to fire up just like that. All right, that's about it we're going to do for this video. Um, it's a bit of a shame that starter motor's buggering out on me because um, I would have liked to have that thing started today. I could go ahead and try and fix that starter motor and get it working a bit better now, but it's starting to get late in the afternoon. It's like 30 degrees here in Hawke's Bay, sunny Hawke's Bay, so it's time for a beer and a ciggy and some dinner, I think. Um, now, we did get the injector pump on there. Like I said, this isn't a tutorial for anybody, but it was a bloody easy job. I thought it would go a lot, um, be a bit more difficult than it was. So everything's just pretty much bolted up. It was just a complete swap out. The timing and the cam gear or the, the uh, pulley for it all just seemed to want to go straight on there. The only thing I know I am going to have to change probably is the throttle setup. Um, when it's in the truck, I'll probably have to, I know a lot of people make, they raise this up so it's sort of about here and then the cable comes down and pulls from up here down into it. Um, because there's a lot of stuff in the way being the oil filter and that to run a cable through there to that So on the next video, we're going to get that starter motor We're going to pull it apart pull the solenoid apart clean up the plates the copper plates in there check the bushes in the um, Motor of it and get it running mint and then we'll whack it on and hopefully we'll have this thing at least cranking over in the next video So if you're for the first time and you found that of any interest and you're doing the 1kz to mechanical pump swap Hopefully by the time you find this video, I've got the thing running So I go a few videos ahead and you might be able to see it start on the floor um, If not then I failed so yeah, see you on the next one eh? Also on the gearbox front still haven't uh, decided what I'm gonna do about the bell housing So what I'm probably actually gonna do is literally just try and find an R150 or R151 gearbox That is the gearbox that will fit on the back of that bell housing and then they are the gearbox that came out and surfs behind the 1kz so if anyone knows where an r150 or 151 is cheap sort of close to hawks bay will travel uh hit me up in the comments below keen as mustard